Shalom and welcome. This is Apostle Hal Goy at Destiny Apostolic Christos Center and Destiny Transformation Glory Fellowship. I welcome you to this brief introduction to our discipleship program. If you are watching me right now, it's because you are either curious or interested in our discipleship program. Discipleship is the apostolic mandate. Many uh, refer to it as the Great Commission. Our Lord Jesus Christ commission mandated, sent and charged the early apostles to go out and make disciples of all the nations and all the people, every race, every tongue, every tribe, every nation, to be disciples. And so this same mandate is upon us. A Destiny Apostolic Christos Center and Destiny Transformation Glory Fellowship and at the Destiny Apostolic Academy of Life, our main focus is discipleship making. The purpose of, disip the purpose of discipleship is maturity, spiritual maturity. The people of God growing to the fullness of the heavenly life to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. This is what it's all about. This is what discipleship is all about. Maturity comes through change, growth, and growth and change come through transformation. And transformation must encompass the whole being. Just like the scriptures tell us, Apostle Paul writing to the Thessalonica church, that God wants you to prosper body, soul, and spirit. God is interested in the full person growing to that level of maturity. And prosperity here is not just about money or physical health. It is the fullness of the life of God filling us in our bodies, transforming our bodies. Hallelujah bringing divine life to every member, every organ of our bodies and to our souls, healing our emotions and, 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 and giving us a new expression, releasing the, a new expression of the heart of God, the thought of God, the mind of God, what God says. Hallelujah. And then the spirit. So the next revival that is coming is going to be a soul revival where the soul of man is going to catch fire with the life of heaven. In the book of Matthew chapter 14 and Mark chapter 17, we see how our Lord Jesus Christ handled this process. When people come to church, to most of the churches today, the focus is on the numbers, the head counts, how many are we? It's what is visible. But our Lord Jesus Christ wasn't concerned about that. His focus was the fullness of the measure of his stature in man. And so the story here is about a young rich man comes to, to church. He's young, he's rich, probably good looking, influential, and, and he, has, he got connections. You know, he comes to church and he expresses the desire to follow the Lord. And in many churches today, he would be welcome, given a nice, comfortable place to sit, treated well, given much attention. But the Lord didn't do any of that. He confronted the man. Up from the, de from the door, he confronted the man. He saw the issues of this man. He saw the hindrances. He saw what would become an obstacle to him. And he confronted him in those areas. Go, sell all your, money, all your goods. And then take all your money, give it to the poor. Don't even give, bring me an offering. Just give everything to the poor. You see, this would not be the approach for many of us. Many, our tendency for many of us would be, you know, people just coming in, just, you know, give them some prophetic word, you know, what God wants to do for them, how God wants to open finances for them and, 
and give them, you know, husband or, or wife or a new job or a new car. And, and, and then we begin catering to the very things that would become an obstacle to the development and the growth of this person. And so we maintain them at the baby, spiritual baby level. And so we have too many immature people in the church because of the way we bring them in. Well, for many preachers, you know, this is a benefit because in the end, you know, they're the only ones hearing the voice of God. They're the only one prophesying on you, on your spouse, your children, your grandchildren, your cat, your dog, your job, the police, the government. And so people keep coming, but our Lord Jesus Christ had a different approach. He explains this further in the book of Luke chapter 14. He says, each one of you, when you want to build a house, see life is a house. You are the house of God. I am the house of God. And together we are a spiritual house. God is building us. And so he says, before you build the house, evaluate the cost and compare with your resources and abilities. This is very, very interesting. Before you can follow Jesus, our Lord, even today, he says, check yourself. Do you have what it takes to follow me? Don't think that you can just come and follow me just like that. It will cost you. And he gave the young man the cost up front. 